In the week 4, we saw how to control some elements on the screen, either using the keyboard input or automatically through the update of some parameters. But for the moment, this subject seems a bit lifeless. They will not modify their direction or speed if we don't tell them to do so. In real life, balls do not only bounce when they collide with a wall, but they also lose speed progressively. And of course, everything outside of the computer screen falls. In this video lecture, we are going to see how to give this little bit of life to our circle on the screen. In this piece of code, we have implemented what we have learned in week 4. Using the simple GUI and the random modules, we can see that we create a frame and inside of that frame we draw a canvas with a circle inside and we also update the position of that circle if we look closer at the function update post we can see that this is very simple we try to add some velocity to the position of the circle and if it uh, stays inside of the canvas at this velocity otherwise it makes the ball bounce in this direction it makes the same thing for both index okay let's try it out here we've got our circle if we click the button it gives a random speed in both directions so this is correct is what we have we expected the circle will bounce forever as it loses no speed that's what we've got by the end of the week 4 but now we want to give the circle a more realistic behavior we can start by making the circle lose some speed each time it bounces at the side of the canvas. We can add a modulus here in the update position function. So each time the circle bounces here, we're going to put here this times 0 that 6 times. 0 that 6 and it will start losing some speed let's try it out here we got a circle and we launch it we can see that the ball loses some speed it loses exactly 0 that 4 at each time try again it works properly okay this reminded me of a billiards game as if we look at the table from the upper side but if we want to give the circle the behavior of a ball that is inside of a box the next thing we can do is to add some gravity fortunately we have here a function that implements that gravity and first of all let's try it out well, it seems that it works properly. If we launch the circle again, it works correctly. Well, except that it doesn't stop at the friction with the floor, but we will look at this later. We could think that this is very difficult to implement a function that adds gravity to the circle and that this will require us to write a lot of code. So let's take a look at it closer. Well we can see that it is really simple everything we have to do is at each time we draw the canvas we add a global variable gravity that is 0 0.5 here and then when we update the position of the canvas the ball try to reach the bottom of the screen all the time even if the starting velocity was toward the top of the screen so wow, we have really enhanced the realistic behavior of the circle with just a very few lines of code. If we look at it again, in the update position function we added some constant to make the circle lose some speed at each time it bounced. And in the add gravity function we just added a global variable that made the circle fall. So let's run the program again to see what else we have to do. If we launch the ball, 
well, we can see that it is never stopping. So that's it. We need some friction. And fortunately, we have here a function that implements this friction. Let's take a look at the code. Uh, what it does is very simple. It checks if the circle is in the bottom of the canvas, and if it is, it applies a constant here that now it is 0 0.97. So let's test it. We have to click this button. Well, maybe it stops very fast. Let's try with another value. 98. Well, I think for me this is perfect. We can see that we have to use very high values here because the refresh rate is very high, 60 times a second. So that's everything we need to get this realistic behavior. Just a few lines of code. Before concluding this video lecture, I want to show you just one more thing. Professor Warren showed us some games that he usually play, and I felt really surprised not to hear talk about Portal. Well, this is one of my favorite games, and I have brought back here our Pong Paddle to make a little Portal-like situation. Here we've got the code for our game, and we can see that it's got the same functions we saw in the exercise and we have taken back the paddle and the key handlers from the Pong mini project. Let's look at something special here. In the update position of the circle, it checks if the position of the circle is inside of the paddle when it is colliding with the bottom of the canvas. And if it is, it calls the launch function and what it does is it takes the current velocity, the current speed of the circle and it is changed the values and it put it in some position in the canvas. Let's try it out. This is what happens each time the, the circle goes inside of this paddle that now it is a uh, holding in the canvas. It it is thrown there in this position in the corner and at least for me this is very funny I could uh, spend a good time here well so this is all I leave you the code if you want to try and thank you for watching